We now bring you what we call Purim Noir. <laughs> Every year, we bring you a timely, hilarious, crazy Purmspiel. This year, this noir spiel was written with the help of ChatGTP. <laughs> this story is set in the dark alleys and dangerous corners of ancient Persia. This is a tale of intrigue, betrayal, and revenge. We now take you back to a time when the world was ruled by kings and queens and the fate of a people hung in the balance. Our story begins with one of those kings whose name was complicated, but he was not. <laughs> His name was King Achashverosh. As the night fell over the kingdom of Persia, the extravagant King Achashverosh threw a grand banquet to showcase his wealth and power. Except that it wasn't night. It was many, many nights. It was months, many months of nights and days. There was wine flowing like Niagara Falls, and everyone was drunk enough to go down the falls without a barrel. All the nobles, princes, and servants of the kingdom were there, and the king spent all of his drunken effort to try to impress them. The conversation turned into a competition. The king needed to win, like pasta needs sauce. <laughs> he knew that the one thing that he couldn't lose was if he showed off the beauty of his wife, the incredibly gorgeous Queen Vashti. While the king was at a party for the men, the queen was at a party for the women in the kingdom, but the king was ready to bring her to him and his men-only party. King Ahasuerus told his servants to fetch Queen Vashti and told them to tell her she should wear her crown. I'm at my party with gals from the town. Then the king asked me to dance in just my crown. A misbehaving, I ain't gonna dance for you. A boop, boop, ba doop. The king was very disappointed, but his, ang his advisors were very angry. They told him to banish Vashti like she was chametz before Passover. <laughs> The king got lonely without a queen, and that's where I come into the story. Wait, wait, that's when, not where I come into the story, that's when I come into the story. I heard the king was looking for the most beautiful woman in the kingdom. Wait, wait, that's still not me. <laughs> My name is Mordechai. I'm a Jewish man. <laughs> I'm raising my niece, and she is so beautiful that mirrors fight over getting to reflect her. Her name is Esther. Her name is Esther. <laughs> Esther. 
She was just a humble Jewish girl trying to make her way in a world that was stacked against her. But then she caught the eye of King Ahasuerus, the most powerful man in the land. He made her his queen, and we thought our troubles were over. But little did we know, that was just the beginning. I had to warn her not to reveal to the king that she was Jewish. Persian kings and Jewish queens go together like oil and water, and it was a slippery slope. In addition to being beautiful, she was a good kid, so she hid her Jewishness. I still was nervous with her in the castle all the time, so when I took my daily constitutional, it was in the courtyard of the palace. One dark and gloomy day, I was walking around the corner of the palace, and I overheard... Two soldiers plotted to kill the king. I reported what I heard faster than lightning on a kite. The king was grateful, or so he said. The king didn't always make the wisest choices. The next thing we knew, he had chosen a new advisor, someone who wanted the glory of being a king without the messy responsibilities. The advisor's name was Haman. <laughs> Here comes Haman, here comes Haman, boo! He had a plan to destroy all the Jews in the kingdom, but there was one man who stood in his way, me, Mordechai, a Jew who refused to bow down to him. So he hatched a plot to have me killed and to convince the king to sign a decree that would lead to the extermination of all the Jews. I heard what Haman was planning, so I went to Est... Ooh, thank you! I I heard what Haman was planning. So I went to Esther, my niece, the queen, and asked her to use her influence to stop the decree. But she was afraid to approach the king without an invitation. I knew that time was running out. You know, Haman hates us, wants to kill us too. And now I know what I've got to do. I've got to do right. I've got to save the Jews. Mm, mm. Got to figure out how to save the Jews. Esther Rabbit. She had to act fast. So she put on her bravest face and went to the king, uninvited. Everyone knows that if he didn't extend his scepter to her, she would be killed on the spot. But he showed her mercy, and she asked him to come to a banquet she had prepared. He asked her if he needed to bring anything, like wine, or maybe wine. She said the only request she had was that he bring one thing, his advisor, Haman. Here comes Haman. Here comes Haman. (laughs) Esther's beautiful. She threw a wonderful party. The king enjoyed himself and asked if he could do anything for Esther. He even offered half of his kingdom. She stayed cool. She was on a mission to save her people. Of all the things she could have asked for, she asked for the one thing the king wanted most of all, to come to another party. And once again, to bring Haman. (laughs) After the wonderful first party that Esther threw, the king went back to his bedroom. He had spent the night with his beautiful wife, but now he couldn't sleep. He was like a child who came back from a Mardi Gras parade, who ate too much king cake and drank too much Dr. Pepper. (laughs) You know how it is. He asked to have his big book read to him. Reading the book was as boring as watching a pond dry up. (laughs) Reading the book usually puts him to sleep. Listening to the book made him realize that he had never done anything to thank the guy who saved his life at the soldier's plot to kill him. That would be me. Once again, he was clueless what to do. It was the middle of the night, But when he needed advice like this, he called his advisor, Haman. (laughs) 
Well, that advisor had an ego that was bigger than an ocean. When the king asked him how to honor someone special, he told the king all of the things he would have wanted for himself. Wear the king's finest clothing, ride on the king's finest steed, have someone lead him around the city shouting, this is how the king honors someone special. That's how I came, how it came to be that I got to spend a day wearing the king's finest clothes, riding the king's finest steed, and being led around the town by none other than Haman. The king and his advisor came to Esther's second party. It didn't seem possible, but the king had even better time at the second party than in any other party he had ever been to. But then he realized that his wife, the beautiful Queen Esther, was sad. <laughs> the kind of sad that makes you feel like there was a storm cloud over her head. The king didn't know what he could do to help her. He offered her half his kingdom again. She told him about the plan to destroy all the Jews, and that meant her too. The king was outraged. He asked who was responsible for this plot. She turned around, and with her beautiful hand and an outstretched finger, she pointed to Haman. Oh, the king ordered that guy to be hanged on the very gallows that he had prepared for me, and the Jews did not get eliminated. And that's how we won the day. We celebrate Purim to this day as a reminder of the triumph of good over evil. But let it be known that in every generation there will be those who seek to destroy us. And we must be vigilant and we must be brave to stand up to them and to prevail. Mm -hmm.